Boros and Orochi are the two big bads of the manga and both stand atop of the power scale of the series, at least for the villains. But who is the stronger of the two? Meaning that who is the strongest villain in the series, at least in the manga currently? Well, in this video we're going to be talking about that, so let's get into it. So when Orochi was originally introduced into the series, there was a lot of mystery around him. We didn't really know much until actually recently. But in that time, we always had the question looming of who is stronger between him and Boros. Because it's only natural that we're going to think this since, like I said, they are the two big bads of the series and no one else has really come close to them as of yet. And in the meantime, we always assumed that Boros was just naturally going to be stronger since it's really difficult for someone to come close to the unfair level of power that Boros has. However, with the developments of Chapter 108, things have really come to light as to the exact power of Orochi, something that really eluded us up until now. So now I think is the good time to answer the question of who is stronger between Boros and Orochi. So real quick, let me just break down these two characters and explain why they are so powerful. So Boros is the proclaimed dominator of the universe. It's implied that he's like the Saitama outside of Earth, like no one has ever really challenged him. And it's because he's coming from a race of aliens that are already inherently crazy powerful, like the world that they come from is like apocalyptic and it's like volcanoes and hellfire all the time, so they had to adapt. And that's how they became so crazy powerful. And it just so happens that Boros is the strongest of the strong aliens. He's kind of like the Thanos of this world. Uh, but it's also implied that he trained on top of being extremely talented. So those two lethal combinations made him insanely powerful the way that he is. Orochi, on the other hand, was born as a human. And once he is encountered by Giro Giro, she reveals that he, just like Boros, had the inherent talent and potential to become really powerful, like way more so than a typical human in the world of One Punch Man. And she puts him through a whole bunch of experiments that lead him to becoming a monster originally, but after that, in order to break through the plateau that all monsters seem to hit in this world, she puts him through the process of coming extremely close to death, surviving it, and repeating that process in order to break through the limits that are originally set by whatever the monstrification process is in this world. So just like Garo and Saitama, Giro Giro used this process on Orochi to make him stronger than pretty much every other character in this series. And it also explains why Orochi became so big and gained so many abilities that he currently has. And it's because the further evolvements to his form after coming back from death every time made him bigger and more powerful. So now let's try our best to compare their feats because I think this is going to be our best shot at figuring out who is stronger among the two. So I'm going to be mainly comparing released Boros or Boros Unleashed. This is like his second form, the one that we see him take after his armor comes off, you know, the blue with the, all of the white electricity and the pink hair. Uh, I'm going to be comparing him to the Orochi that we see from chapter 108. Uh, like the streamlined one, the, uh, we don't get a name on this form of Orochi, actually, so I'm just gonna call it his true form, uh, the one we see him take when he's really ready to fight Saitama seriously. So conveniently, they both fought Saitama, so that's gonna make it easier to compare here, uh, but also coincidentally, they both lose one of their arms in their fight, so... We don't see Boros lose his arm, it happens off panel, but we can just assume that he loses it in a similar way as Orochi. So Orochi throws one of his one arm water stream rock smashing fists at Saitama and it doesn't work out and his arm comes off after Saitama punches it. So I don't really know if it's fair to compare the durability here, as like I said, Orochi is bigger than Boros. So it's difficult to really figure out if one punch was more significant than the other or if Saitama was trying harder against one or the other. But regardless, still pretty impressive that they could simply just take a strike from Saitama regardless of where it is and they could still function afterwards. So Boros kind of has one up on Orochi here because he originally does take a strike from Saitama uh, when, we, when we first see him, when he's in his armored form. And he does live, uh, you know, doesn't really seem to take much damage from it. 
So, does this more so the armor that Boros had, or is it more so indicative of his crazy tankiness that he has? I think it's probably going to be the latter here, but maybe it's still not fair to compare these feats because we don't really ever see Orochi take a strike from Saitama to his solar plexus the way that we saw Boros take it. And also, the final punch that Saitama does to Orochi that quote-unquote kills him seems to be way higher of an effort of a strike than what he originally does to Boros. Like, when he punches Boros in his armored form, it's kind of just like a nonchalant punch, nothing like what we see from Chapter 108. So I guess it's still unclear right now who has more durability, but we can go into speed at this point because I'm just going to say right now that Boros is way faster than Orochi, especially in his released form. Uh, that doesn't mean that Orochi is slow by any means. He's very fast, actually. Pretty impressively fast, considering how big he is. So his speed feats in Chapter 92 against Garo really put that on display, but the only real clear speed feat, and I'm not even sure if it is a speed feat, but it seems that way uh, in his fight against Saitama from Chapter 108. So towards the end of the chapter, after Orochi sends his, his uh, head horn dragons at Saitama and they engulf him and he breaks out of it, we see Saitama cock his arm back, and in the following panel, we see him throw the punch. But Orochi is able to avoid it and wind up above Saitama. So that means, I guess he's fast enough to avoid a lackadaisical punch or just like a standard punch from Saitama. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but still, it is a speed feat, kind of, and it's showing that he can hang, you know, but still... Nothing compared to the speed feats we see of released Boros from chapter 35. So I think their durability more or less could be considered the same at this point, and their speed, not so much. Boros, definitely faster of the two in my opinion. So let's compare their strength. Uh, this is another one that I think is more or less equal, so we don't really have many defining strength feats from Orochi and released Boros, but just based off of what they can do, I'm going to assume that, like, more or less, they're probably physically the same in strength. Maybe one is a little more than the other, but there's not, like, a clear discrepancy, in my opinion. So now let's compare their energy, fire, blast, whatever these things are. The two projectiles that they show in their perspective battles with Saitama, I think this is the most important thing to compare amongst these two in order to really accurately assess who is stronger, at least when comparing with released Boros to the true form of Orochi. So the blast, the released energy that Boros shoots from the eye in his chest in chapter 35 at Saitama, pretty impressive. However, it's not as big as the crazy one-armed blast that Orochi does to Saitama in chapter 108, but their output, their damage output seems to be comparable. Like, it's difficult to compare them because Orochi's blast is happening underground, and uh, uh, Boros's blast is happening on top of a spaceship. <laughs> so, I'm going to try my best to compare these two, but based off of what I saw, they seem to be comparable in damage output. So, like I said, Orochi's blast, of course, way bigger than what we see of Orochi's, but the end results, I don't know. So, Boros's blast, the output of it, the re end result, the, the collateral damage, the destruction of it, is only seen from the perspective of the top of Boros's ship. But if we compare that vicinity to the city beneath it, it looks like this one blast from Boros maybe can destroy an eighth of the city that they're above. Maybe. Maybe less than that, maybe a little more than that. And in Chapter 108, when we see Orochi's Blast, it seems similar, like the damage output, because, like I said, we only see it underground, but there is tremors above the surface, like the ground implodes and takes out a good chunk of the scenery that we see, which I guess is like uh, an eighth of the city, I don't know, maybe less, maybe more, uh, but we also see the crater underground, uh, from the perspective of the subway car, and it's friggin' gigantic. But still, 
there's not like a clear-cut difference between what uh, which beam or energy blast here seems to be stronger than the other so I'm just gonna say they're comparable however when Orochi decides to go all out and uses all of his dragon mounts and all of his beams including the one in his chest at once there is no question at that point, clearly it is bigger and I think implied to be stronger than just one singular chest blast from Boros in chapter 35, so I'm gonna give Orochi the edge there on that, I mean come on, I think it would be unfair to say that Boros' chest blast is stronger than a full-on every mouth shooting a blast out from Orochi. So that about does it. Now let's go over everything we talked about and try to come up with a conclusion here. So between the two, I have their durability about even. I have a clear speed advantage to Boros. I mean, he's way too fast, like for almost anyone. Uh, the strength is about even, and the energy blast factor, I'm going to give that to Orochi. He really excels at that. I mean, it's more evident than ever from Chapter 108, but it was clearly on display in Chapter 92 as well. Uh, but other than that, who would win if they were to fight? And I think the fight would be super competitive. Like, neither of these guys would low diff the other, who would be very high diff for either one. But, uh, I'm not entirely sure, you know, because, like, clearly Boros is faster, so can he evade the fire beams forever? But we also have to remember that Orochi is a martial arts master and a genius at that. He has the same copying ability that uh, Garo does, and he also has the Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist in his arsenal. So would that be enough to eventually overcome Boros, or would Boros just be too strong in the end for him? Well, right now I'm going to say the fight is more or less even between these two. I can't pick a winner. But that's going to bring me to the final part of this video, and it's talking about Meteoric Burst Boros. So yeah, this is a thing that we can't forget about, and you might have been yelling at the screen at me telling me to talk about this, but I didn't forget about it. I just really wanted to go over the comparable things and abilities that these two characters have rather than just outright saying, hey, Boros is stronger than Orochi because he can use Meteoric Burst. Yes, that is true, but Meteoric Burst is like the last result of Boros. It's not like he's just going to casually go into it and fight someone. Like, you have to earn this. You have to push Boros to be able to use the Meteoric Burst because once he gets to it, it's, I don't know, it's, he says that it puts a lot of stress on his body, so he only uses it in order to end the fights fast. But at that point, I mean, he's really approaching disaster level god, and he's easily the strongest villain slash character we have seen besides Saitama in the entire series. In my opinion, no one is really coming close to Meteor vs. Boros. He's definitely the fastest, the strongest, uh, the most durable of all of the characters. I mean, he took a consecutive normal punch from Saitama and lived to tell the tale. He took a normal punch from him, or at least what we assume is a normal punch, and only went back a couple feet. He has the insane regeneration ability. And I guess we could talk about the Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, although I don't really think it's fair to compare it to Orochi's Collective Blast because the Collapse of Star Warring Cannon is like the final move of Boros. It takes all of his energy to accomplish this move, but still, it's really way above everything that we have seen of Orochi from Chapter 108. So, yeah, in the end, Boros is stronger than Orochi, but he needs to go into his Meteoric Burst form for that to happen. Uh, but before that, I think it's really anyone's game at that point. So that's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Let me know what you think would happen between Boros in his released form and Orochi in his true form. And if you liked the video, please give it a like. I also have a Patreon. It gives you access to a weekly Q&A video that I do on this channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.